Today's scripture is Old Testament, Kings 2nd, chapter 19, verse 15 to 18. Kings 2nd, chapter 19, verse 15 to 18. As I read through it, I hope all of you will listen to the voice of the living God. The Lord said to him, Go back the way you came, and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazel, king over Aram, and also anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, king over Israel, and anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, from Abel Meharab, to succeed you as prophet. Jehu will put to death any who escape the sword of Hazel, and Elisha will put to death any who escape the sword of Jehu. Yet I reserve seven thousand in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal, and whose mouths have not kissed him. Amen. The title of today's sermon includes English words of burnout, even in the Korean title. The word burnout has become a very popular word these days. In particular, given the context of today's sermon, I decide to keep it as it is. Please bear with me. Burnout has become so popular that it is included one of Korean words. According to the National Institute of Korean Language, it defines it is uh, the state of mental and physical exhaustion after an activity is over or a state of psychological and physiological exertion due to inability to release accumulated stress due to overtraining or the game or work does not go according to the plan. The term burnout was coined by New York-based psychoanalyst Freudenberger. It means to be destroyed by fire and there's a term called the burnout syndrome in psychoanalysis. So the burnout syndrome is kind of uh, uh, well known. It can be also referred to exhaustion syndrome or tiredness syndrome as well. We take vacations from time to time. Why is it? It may be because we want to keep our body and mind healthy before burnout. We need to take a break to work and we can keep our efficiency high. If you are burnout or exhausted, you can work and even though you are able to work, your efficiency might be pretty low. So you need to take breaks from time to time to keep your body and mind healthy. In fact, we often see burned out people around us. I think you may yourself experience the burnout once or twice in your lifetime. It occurs to those who live very enthusiastically. And we have seen a lot of people who are burned out while living a religious life. Person who has been serving in the choir, serving as a teacher and volunteering in meal services and many other services. After all that, they realize, why do I have to do everything? And they experience the burnout. And at your work, Maybe you have a very, very enthusiastic to be useful and helpful for the company, but after a long time, you realized and you feel like you are the only one to work hard and become resurgic. Very recently, I think burnout syndrome happens among housewives commonly. Moms and homemakers, many of them may experience burnout because of COVID-19. People spend more time at home. That means the work of mom and how homemakers 
has doubled or tripled. They have to take care of all the rents and homes and children. So many of them, I heard, are having very difficult time. If you believe you are having burnout syndrome, then I hope today my sermon help you a lot. Maybe because of COVID-19, the, those who uh, serve for the church a lot may have a little more time for themselves. Of course, you know, church workers are working more because of the COVID, COVID-19, but some other co- church services are put to hold because of the pandemic, then I think this is a high time for you to look back on yourself to think about when you experienced the burnout and if you are allowed to come back to church after the pandemic, how wisely and how better you can serve before the church without experiencing any burnout. So I think you can use this time to think about that. So today's sermon is for those who are currently experiencing burnout and who experienced in the past the burnout and those who try to avoid experiencing burnout. I'm not a psychologist, but I want to help those who are having hard times to get away from that difficult times. I try to show you how our God help us who are experiencing or in deep despair. Today's text and scripture is about Elia. I think when it comes to Elia, you may think of the white broom tree, and under that tree, our Lord fed him and make him stand up again. You know, maybe all the characters in the Bible, Elia is the one who experienced one of the deepest despairs. So his story gives a lot of lessons to us. So let's read today's scripture from the perspective again. Elia didn't appear a lot in the Old Testament. He appears intensively in the first and second Kings, but we can't find him a lot in the other Bibles, unlike Moses, who appeared here and there many times. However, to Israelites, Elia is a key person. He is very important. Together with Moses, he is one of the representing prophets. And in the New Testament as well, he was mentioned as a person who directly linked to Jesus. In the New Testament, Uh, the one person asked Jesus, are you the Elia who will come to us? And Moses and Elia were described to be present together on the Mount uh, the Transformation. So Elia was considered as one of the greatest prophets in the Bible. There are many well-known stories about Elia. One is the story about in the Mount Galmel and before Ab king he killed 450 he fight against 450 disciples of the king Arab and they do face they stood against to show who God is better. And he showed a wonderful miracle there. And fires from the heaven came down to burn everything there. And so the Elia showed wonderful miracles on the mountain Horeb. And so whenever we think about Elia, he is always related to the miracles as well. But interestingly, he created and showed a lot of miracles, but he experienced deep and serious 
disappears. So he came to the white broom tree and said that I had enough, Lord. And he said, Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. That's what he said to the Lord under the white broom tree. Then why he came to the state to say that? If you read through the、uh, Bible before that word, you can understand. And the Kings, the first chapter 19, says that、e、Isabel was told what happened. In the chapter 18,、uh, e、Elia stands against all people who worship some idols and he kills all of them. And that story was delivered to Isabel. And Isabel sent an Iran to Elia saying that, I will kill you. I will kill you by tomorrow, then I will be dealt with that. That's a very strong threat. Elia, after hearing that、uh, threat, he feels weary and he、uh, runs away to the wilderness. And now, under the tree of the white broom, he waits to be killed. And、uh, the Kings, first chapter 9, verse 4, says that I have had enough, Lord, take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. He suffered a very serious sense of inferiority. Elia showed wonderful miracles than any other else, but he feels a very serious sense of inferiority and he even asked the Lord to take his life. Then, what made the Elia to make that confess? It's Very difficult to understand that. And the key to see that is that we have to see his intention when he w o r s h i p e d in the mountain Galmel. He prayed to the Lord, saying that、uh, it's chapter 18, verse 13 Answer me, Lord, answer me. So these people will know that you, Lord, are God. And that you are turning their hearts back again. That's what he prays to the Lord. And he asks the Lord to take his prayer. And the result is, as you are well aware, Elias victory. So everything w e r e burnt as a fire came down from the heaven. Elia may have been thinking this way. Uh, this is over with just, just one shot. And perhaps no one can deny God anymore. After this wonderful miracle, everyone will be forced to repent and follow the Lord. That's his、uh, kind of understanding for that. And on top of that, After that miracle, he showed another miracle to King Ahab and his people. He went up to the mountaintop and he said,、uh, There will be rain very soon. And King Ahab, he said, You can go back to your kingdom. And with a smile, he may come down the hill. Then what happened? There was a heavy rain in the land which suffered a serious drought for three years. So, while doing this kind of miracles, Elia may believe that there is no way for you to turn away. Maybe around tomorrow, you come to me and say, d You will come back to the Lord and you will repent. That's what he may think. But what's the result? Isabel is sending an event to kill him, to say to kill、e、Elia.、Yeah. It's like singing some movie, a boxing movie. You, your competitor were falling down because you hit him very hard, but he never collapsed and just rose again and again to fight back. That's maybe what Elia. Things back then. 
he showed a multiple times of a miracle, then the people should decide to come back to the Lord, but they didn't. They just uh, zero in on, on the contrary. Uh, they say they will kill Elia. Power comes under pressure, so Elia feels a sense of despair. Elia, in fact, was a man who relied heavily on miracles for his miracle. Amazing miracles happened through him. He raised the dead, he healed the drought, and performed the miracles such as the sacrifice on Mount Galmel. But now, slowly, gradually, he sees a powerful force of evil that can't be overcome by miracles alone. And then he falls into absolute despair. And then how our Lord deals with Elia, how he tried to heal him. First of all, God sent an angel to Elia to comfort him. He gave Elia sweets and water and made Elia to walk 40 days to Mountain Horeb. And finally, on the Mountain Horeb, he starts heal Elia. Lord first asked two times Elia, What are you doing here, Elia? Maybe this question means that why, why you are feeling despair? Why you are in despair? Why you have to feel that? And then Elia replied, I have been very jealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword, and I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. Elia said it repeatedly, not only on the verse 10, but 14. It's like a child who is telling everything to his mother. He is so grievous enough to say this word repeatedly to the Lord. And here, we can see one cause why Elia feels so dire sense of despair. He says, I am the only one left. So he feels he's the only one to deal with everything. So as soon as he realizes he's the only one left, he falls into the sense of despair. You worked hard, you have been doing everything, but you just realize I am the only one who is doing this work and now you have disappeared and afraid. If you believe you are the only one doing that, then we are more likely to fall onto the trap of uh, disappear. You may feel depression and helpless as well. That happens to Elia as well. He feels he's fighting against a big number of people alone. Even though I am doing my best, I can overcome all of that. I cannot overcome all that forces of evil, even through the miracles. And after that, he uh, despairs and he feels despairs and helpless. So he, our Lord, need to empower Elia. So God brings Elia to Mountain Horeb, and he said that. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came the fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire came a gentle whisper. God established Elia on Mountain Horeb and on Mountain Horeb just like Moses felt God passing by he put Elia in a situation to experience similar uh, miracles this is very similar what happened in Exodus 19 on the Mountain Horeb or Sinai 
God came down with fire and wind and earthquake. And these elements were similar to the situation where Moses met God on Mount i n h o r e b earlier. He met Moses in that shape two times. Whenever that happens, the Lord was there. And when God met e l i a he met in the same way, in the same shape, in the same place, but he was not there. e l i a stood on the same place as Moses stood before, but the experience that e l i a had was different from the one of Moses. There were winds, earthquake, and fire, but there was no Lord. What does that mean? How we have to interpret that? Is it, is it meaning that you are less than Moses? You are a different level of Moses? The more important thing is that when our Lord shows wind and earthquake, sometimes the Lord was there, but sometimes the Lord was not existent. That's what our Lord wants to say to e l i a Whenever you experience a miracle, there was Lord, but that's not the case. Whether there is a miracle or not, the Lord can be there or not. And he asked that, What are you doing here, e l i a What does question mean? The first question was about why you feel despair. And this time, this question means that why you always look for miracles. The miracle is the only thing you try to look for, you try to seek. Why you seek only the miracle? So far, e l i a has been working largely through miracles. He was a man of miracles with passion. But what we learned from today's scripture is that performance or miracle and the results are not the only things that are important. e l i a has been largely reliant on the miracles, but our Lord wants to open a new perspective to e l i a And now, He gives his prescription to Elia. He said, Go back the way you came and go back to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazel, king of Aram, and also anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, king of Israel, and anoint Elisha, son of Shabbat, from Abdel Modola, to succeed you as prophet. And he added one comment more. Yet, I reserve 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal, and whose mouths have not kissed him. e l i a said he is left alone. And to e l i a the Lord first said that, You are not the only one. There are still 7,000 people left out there. You are not alone. Do not think you are the only one to work. You are not the only one who bear the burdens. This is not done by your will and your power, but by His will and His plan. That's the message of our Lord to e l i a And what is the meaning of the prescription that Lord prescribed to e l i a Well, actually, I don't really understand why God is saying these words to e l i a who is desperate and burned out. But his word includes some key essence and key lessons. What is hidden behind that? First of all, God tells e l i a to raise up people. That's the first command. To raise up people and let them work together. Then, one, if one falls, another can stand up and to build it up again. So, you need to build up and raise up people. Do not consider you are the only one left to work. Do not work alone let, and learn how to work together with others. 
Jehu will put to death any who escape the sword of Hazel, and Elisha will put to death any who escape the sword of Jehu. It's amazing. It means if Hazel does not work, Jehu will do it, and if Jehu fails to work, then Elisha will do it. Do not try to work alone. Do not monopolize. Learn to work together. Uh, raise up people, and also it also means not to be afraid or embarrassed to get help. Work together, and learn how to work together. That's the message of our Lord. And the second key message is that Elia should not rely solely on miracles, but be faithful to the prophet's mission. God tells Elia what to do as a prophet. The command is to make Hazel king over Syria, Jehu as king of prophet, a king. Excuse me, Jehu as king over Israel, and Elisha as a prophet. So this is the mission of a prophet. So no longer he doesn't want Eli. Elia dwell on miraculous ecstasy and to go back to the task assigned to him and do it faithfully. Instead of focusing on the overflowing work, such as killing the priest of Baal and Asherah, uh, return to original work given to him. When Lord called Elia, he asked him to go to the king Arab. And he also said that I will give them rain, and he didn't say anything else except that. But nevertheless, Elia met King Ahab, and he put giving rains behind, and he just started doing what he wanted to do first. He fight against the priest of the Baal and Asherah. He want to show miracle, and this was the voluntary work. But that was not the command of the Lord. That's not the order of the Lord. And after doing that, he falls into despair and depression. And here we see Elia, who experiencing a deepest depression. And now our Lord asks him to go back to the daily lives, and do faithfully the missions given to him. Originally, as a prophet. Then finally, did Elia properly understand and practice God's words? Strictly speaking, it seems that Elia did not fully understand this message of God, because he continues to focus on making miracles. The Bible. The Bible says that if I am a man of God, may fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty men. Then the fire of God fell from heaven and consumed him and his fifty men, according to the Kings, second chapter one verse twelve. So he shows another miracles there, and he didn't do the commands by the Lord. Our Lord asked Elia to anoint Elisha as his successor, as as a prophet, but he didn't do that. And from the verse nineteen, we see that Elia uh, didn't not do that. Elisha follows him very closely, but Elia keep asking Elisha to go away. But Elisha, in the end, takes on the clothes of Elia when he ascends to heaven and becomes his heir. And Elia didn't anoint Hazel, and that work was done by Elisha. The same goes for pouring oil for anointment on Yehu. In the Kings second chapter nine verse one, we see that Elisha sent the disciples of the prophet to anoint them. Elia is the person who lives in the middle of the miracles. While living in the miracle, he enjoys a lot of pleasures, 
So until his very last day, he experiences miracle. He eventually disappeared somewhere in a fire, chariot, and horses. He was with a miracle, and he disappeared with a miracle. But he never get back to the daily lives and are not satisfied with minor and uh, personal missions. So finally, he disappeared in a fire chariot and horses. Literally, he was burnt out. At the end of his life, he was burnt out. What kind of life do you want to live? Raise up people and learn to work with them and go back to your little calling your duty and do faithfully the work given to you that's today's message i hope this message help all of you who are experiencing burnout today i hope it gives you power and wisdom for you let's pray god have mercy on us who are weary and thank you for showing us the way to live today through the story of Elia. Let us turn away from me alone and learn to work together. And help us to enjoy the importance of daily life and small callings. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.